Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Together, we'll explore and enjoy content and conversations around mastering transitions. In our relations, our wellness, our careers, our families, and especially in our missions and visions. You are invited to learn and love and listen with me. Welcome to Practice You. Welcome back to the podcast. I have with me today a very gifted, talented photographer and artist. Her books are in my very own bookshelf. I thank forever Susan Curry for introducing us. Welcome to the podcast, Joyce Tennyson. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I love the work that you do for the world and and can't wait to chat more. Mm, welcome. Your work has appeared on covers of magazines like Time, Life, Newsweek, Premier, Esquire, the New York Times Magazine even. Uh, you're the author of 17 books, including a bestseller called Wise Women, which sits on my shelf. Radiant Beings is your latest. The subtitle of Radiant Beings is The Magical Essence of Flowers, one of my favorite topics. It's the third in a trilogy of books on the life cycle of flowers. I am so looking forward to hearing about the genesis of this book. I know that you made it, uh, according to your introduction, during the pandemic, when you realized that you were going to be sort of holed up at home for some time. You surrounded yourself, as you say in the book, in your studio with a cacophony of flowers and vines, keeping them for long periods to interact with and observe their life cycles. You never knew what each day would bring, you write. Quote, I just trusted and launched myself into the great unknown, hoping I would be energized by what was revealed. The photographs in this book are records of the interactions I've had with my flower subjects. So beautiful. I see people in every flower. I look forward to hearing from you on this. How did all of this begin? Well, that's a great question. And I do see flowers like people. I, uh, most of my books have, have included uh, people, mostly women. That's my strong point, maybe because I grew up in a household of women and actually lived on the grounds of a convent, which was a school. And a lot of my early mentors were these women uh, nuns who had their masters and PhDs. And, and uh, I was very drawn to the mystery uh, of their lives and of the unconscious. So When the pandemic hit, I decided I would uh, surround myself with flowers. I was living in uh, Maine, on Midcoast, in Midcoast, Maine, in the uh, Camden, Rockport area, and luckily have a, a, a lovely flower garden, and my friends all have flower gardens, so I didn't have to buy anything. Uh, to photograph. I actually just uh, surrounded myself. You know, I just have tons of uh, vases and buckets and, and had wildflowers and all, you know, I just, I loved, I loved the whole experience of photographing this, this book. Your love shows in the book. I'm, I'm happy to have you here because it's rare that I just speak to an artist about their work. I think this might even be the first time. You mentioned in your introduction that in Chinese philosophy, a garden is seen as a space not only for contemplation, but also for understanding truths that lay beyond ordinary perception. I love this, the the invisible truths. And I look at these photographs in Radiant Beings and I can't help but see all of the sort of invisible pathways and almost like meridians in a in a human body in each flower and i wonder if that's part of the magic for you it certainly is and i'm I wish I had you to write a little bit in my book because you said that very beautifully actually i uh 
I, I loved this project because I was totally alone um, in, in, you know, my environment. We were, you know, no one could come into the house and, and I would play my favorite music, uh, just whatever was, uh, I was thinking about when I looked at the flowers that I was going to photograph that particular day. And sometimes I'd just be dancing around. I mean, it sounds so silly, but, you know, I would be kind of so uh, looking forward to making these photos and working and trying to collaborate with the flowers in the same way I I collaborate with people. I, I just... Uh, I, I, I just felt so much freedom with them and so spontaneous as if I was sitting with, you know, a girlfriend or two and we were just talking about our lives and telling mm. our own truths. And I, I, I welcomed that, you know, that journey with the flowers I was photographing. So I put my fl- uh, my camera on a tripod mm-hmm. and I was, uh, doing longer exposures, sometimes four and five minutes. And that gave me space for the unknown. If you can imagine that, if you, I think every, all of you, your viewers have cameras that you can put on a timer and, or do a, a, a longer exposure. And so I would, I would be able to move the flowers if I were, you know, literally dancing with them uh, under the lens or whatever that was recorded. I sometimes I did a double exposure. So I was I was really I was inviting the flower in a way to just be part of the whole process of being itself. Mm. You have a few really incredible quotes interspersed throughout the book. Uh, One Rachel Carson quote really touched my heart, having just moved in the last year out of a city into a full, full on forest. Those who dwell among the beauties and mysteries of the earth are never alone or weary of life. I I love that quote (sighs) as well. It is so true, isn't it? I mean, what I remember, I lived in New York City for 25 years during my salad days of, you know, going back and forth between my fine art photographs and working on um, assignments for a lot of the major magazines and also a lot of celebrity portraits that I did for them. And so whenever I just needed to to reclaim my you know inner self, just couldn't wait to in New York all I had was Central Park but when I could get away to Maine where I had taught many years at the Maine photo workshops and could be by the water I I mean I was immediately transported back to you know um, you know my my center and and you know the the quiet and beauty of of nature and I feel in I'm just going to go there for a second because I feel like you probably have had this experience many thousands of times over, but in looking at this book and looking at the flowers in the book, and I know we're seeing them relatively alive, but I feel like in your introduction, how you describe this being with them for, you know, sometimes days, weeks at a time and watching, specifically watching their life cycle. This is where I feel there's a lot of wisdom, a lot of intelligence, and a lot of information, new information that we might not have. And I think that for humans, if you're listening to this, my listener, for example, and, and death still kind of freaks you out a little bit, it might be interesting to not just look at this book because it's so magical, but have a flower that you don't instantly toss the moment the signs of death emerge from the flower and watch it as it gently folds in on itself and watch it as it slowly retreats from its, you know, powerful, open, receptive position from a couple of days ago. And you learn a little something about what it means to gracefully age. Well, that's, that's a wonderful and perceptive comment because I started photographing flowers after I did my book 
called Wise Women, which was portraits. It was the first book ever done, actually, of portraits of women 65 to 100. And I also interviewed the women, just short uh, little interviews, like two or three sentences that I edited that were on the opposite page of their photograph. And I learned so much from them. And I remember uh, photographing uh, Elva... Alvarado, who was in a, uh, she was 93 years old in an old age home, and uh, she was waiting for her 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 dinner in line. And I approached her with the request to photograph her for Wise Women, and uh, sat her down. And uh, I said, I, I I'm interviewing my subjects, and could you tell us something interesting about your long 90? Three year life, and she said, "Oh, Miss Tennyson, I'd have nothing, nothing really important to say." And I said, "Well, just close your eyes, and just say the first thing that you remember." And she closed her eyes, and she said, "I can still remember what it feels like to love with all my heart." Mm. Oh, and she opened her eyes, and she said, "Will that do, Miss Tennyson?" I took one frame in my camera, one photo, and. That was it. And I said, Elva, that will more than do. And I think that, you know, when you I had when I had that experience of meeting all of these amazing women and and asking them questions about what had been important in their lives and and uh, asked them to share some of their wisdom with me, I became unafraid of aging and of what I don't don't call it death anymore. Mm-hmm. I call it the uh, the you know the the life cycle, the the uh, you know the celebration of the full life cycle. And I followed my flowers um, through that whole cycle. I I found them equally as beautiful uh, in bloom as they were at the end of their cycles often. And so it that was one of the joys of, of this whole project was being able to really look at um, these flowers that we know mainly in bloom, um, like a rose, for example, that, that we all have been given as gifts and during the year. Uh, I watched a whole bouquet of roses and photographed them on day one, on day five, on day eight, 10. And I then laid them out in um, the book, uh, my book actually called Flower Portraits that I did um, some years ago. And I could not tell, and my readers told me they sometimes thought that the most beautiful, they looked the most beautiful, um, you know, on day 12, because they they became more artistic, sometimes uh, looking like dancers or mm. it. It's. I encourage your uh, listeners to to do that experience experiment, even with just a few flowers, and just watch them and admire them. And yeah. I'm smiling as as I I tell you these stories. It, it just brings such joy to me to just even remember the experience. Yes, listener, you have a couple of challenges if you're listening to us right now. One is go find one flower. And track her, put her in water, track her with your phone if you like, or just with your mind, or maybe even better with a pencil or some paint, watercolor if you like, and track her as she goes through her life cycle and notice what happens when she begins to wither and the life force kind of leaves her and how, how elegantly she will uh, sort of dip herself down toward the earth. I'm watching right out of the corner of my eye right now, a bouquet of tulips and two of them have, have begun that little dance of um, diminishment. And they are like little dancers, just like you said, slowly bending over and slowly, it's as though they're bowing to the earth in their return. That's a great description. So beautiful. Just so beautiful. 
I have also, um, at the end of their cycle, just taken the what was the the blossom and putting it on a piece of black velvet and photographing them that way, because then they become like little sculptures. And uh, so it is it is uh, such a uh, a journey to watch Mm. and to. Uh, not to judge so quickly that this is something I want to throw away. Yes. I was inspired to do my first flower book because I was in my 50s. And I had been on the Today Show set with Ann Curry and she for the Wise Women book. And at the end of the program, she said, you know, we're going to have another presenter and we're going to use a whole, you know, colorful flowers to dress the set. Would you like these roses? And I said, oh, I would love them. And in the cab, going back to my studio in New York, the idea for the book that became Flower Portraits was so clear in in my mind. I was like, yes, I'm going to start today to follow these roses from the Today Show on their journey, Mm -hmm. on their beautiful, uh, sacred journey. And that I and those were the route or the roses that I I, I documented uh, during their long journey. And uh, at any rate, it, you 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 spoke about that so beautifully without even knowing that story. So thank you. Interesting. Also, Anne Curry, just a total hero. Oh, isn't she amazing? Her story really impresses me. Oh my goodness, she's yeah. having the last laugh, isn't she? She sure is. Love to have her on the podcast. I should probably try. You should. She would. I have her contact information. You know what? Let's do that because she is seriously a hero of mine. She is. She is. I remember she told me when she was dismissed from the Today Show that Matt Lauer had said she wasn't really sexy enough. You know, and now when you read what happened with him and the way he treated women and Oof. all of that, but you know, I always loved the way she looked and her integrity. Always. Every, and the way every she time interviewed her, her the, the, the people that she had been entrusted with, uh, you know, she she was authentic and compassionate towards yes. them in yes. a way that most other um, you know of the the presenters were not. Yeah. And it's nice to hear you talk about her in this way. I've felt this way about her for many, many years. Um, In light of your book, Wise Women, you photographed so many incredible women who have touched your life and who have touched the world with their, with their work, groundbreaking, impactful work. Can you name perhaps a couple of the women whom you photographed and why their sort of face came to mind first? Well, uh, Coretta Scott King immediately came to mind. I mm. mean, she, uh, she just personified so much of, uh, you know, what I admire in people, you know, courage and strength and compassion. And I, I so desperately wanted to photograph her. And, you know, when you uh, are going to photograph a celebrity you don't you go directly to them you have to start with their agent and then get to their personal manager and uh you know they do their schedule and I remember right before the book was published I I, because I had been talking to her her personal um assistant for you know months trying to make this happen and and telling him I would go to any I would meet her in any city and then finally uh, the last minute, you know, before I went to press, I, I, I called him and I said, I just have this week. Where can I go? And he said, OK, Mrs. King is going to be addressing the uh, the the nursing association associations, their yearly um, re- retreat and conference. And he said, can you be in Atlanta, you know, in three days and I'll get you into the green room? And I said, absolutely. And he said, but she's only going to have three or four minutes, you know, before she goes on stage. I said, I will, I will make do. And when I finally met her and showed her some of the other pictures of the wise women and she knew 
many of them, because 20 percent of the book uh, were celebrities. Uh, she just said, oh, we have lots of time. And I, uh, you know, I. I, I just loved working with her. And I had this idea in my mind. I had only seen her in newsreels in church mm-hmm. um, and where she was swaying with the music. And mm-hmm. so the photograph I had in mind was, and I practiced doing a long exposure, sort of like I did with the flowers of mm-hmm. her swaying um, uh, back and forth. And she said, Oh yeah, I can do that. And, uh, I draped her in some black, uh, fabric because I wanted her to look timeless and, and, uh, neutral. And it's one of my favorite photos in the book because of that. And, but just having that time with her was, you know, a life event that I'll never forget. That's like having Darshan with a proper saint teacher. I felt that way. I really did. I felt so gifted. Incredible. Can you name one other person from that book? Well, you know, uh, gosh, Judy Dench, the actress. Wow. Yes. She was one of my favorite pictures too, actually. Oh, and she was also so pleasant. Uh, You know, and she told me growing up as a Quaker had really kept her ego down. You know, I mean, that she that's I said, you you know, you just don't seem to have any ego or self-importance. She said, oh, the Quakers took care of that. And, uh, you know, but maybe the most touching was Jessica Tandy. When I called her about photographing her, she had said, oh, you know, I've 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 had chemo. I have no hair. You wouldn't want to photograph me. And I said, oh, I'm sure that you're even more beautiful. And she said, well, if you're willing, I am. And when she came um, to the studio, uh, she was like a she was one of the most uh, ethereal human beings with, you know, that because she was petite and very thin, you know, from all of the, the chemo and everything. And she was like a, I don't know, just, she just, she just touched me so deeply. And it's one of my most beautiful portraits I ever did. She's an incredible, incredible, gifted, also very accomplished actor. It's incredible. She was uh, amazing, but her person, oh, she's made a great uh, comment. Uh, I, you know, she said, just tell me what to do, boss. Wow. Uh, laughingly, you know, be, and I, I started laughing and I said, oh, you're so, you're so wonderful. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, but we just laughed a lot and, you know, I'm very quick when I, you know, am photographing uh, people. I, you know, I know what I kind of want, which is to just connect with that person and let, let them, you know, let them just uh, be their their inner self show me their inner self in some way and mm. uh, so that was a, a very memorable moment for me I you know I don't even need to close my eyes to bring it all back again she had these crazy blue eyes I remember yes and uh with having the no hair that had that had done it you know um I don't think I finished the story about why I did started um why I was so interested in doing the women 65 to 100 um mm-hmm. it's because I was in my 50s and I was frightened about getting older because what I had heard is that you could people thought you would be going to seed or over the hill as mm-hmm. you aged and I was I was so f- afraid of that and Although I'm not, you know, a glamorous person and I still buy my clothes at TJ Maxx and, you know, I'm, a, I'm not like somebody who's really showy uh, with my looks or anything, but I'd want it. I, I felt like, am I going to be somebody who's perceived as having gone, been over the hill? Because that's a pejorative kind of thing, in, mm-hmm. you know, or that. And. Uh, and that's what really motivated me. Uh, and so I was, it was, I was happy that, that, uh, the book, uh, did so well and not because of any financial or, you know, ego, uh, reason, but because I had so many, uh, you know, emails and letters from 
people from really around the world because it, it, it had a wide audience thanking me. It was used as a gift to a lot of women at, at a, important birthdays, you know, like yeah. 70 and 80 and 90, and also to a lot of women who were hospitalized for something as a gift. Mm-hmm. And uh, it said it made them feel so much, so much, you know, more worthwhile, even though they might have had, you know, a life-threatening uh, health issue that, 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 that they could still be seen them seeing themselves, uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm still beautiful. I'm still interesting. I'm not over the hill. I'll never be that negative stereotype. No, no. I've given the book as a gift to two teenagers, actually, dear teenage friends that I know. Great. I mean, it's the best. It's just, it's, it's exactly like, the assignment that we just gave to our listener to watch the flower. That's true. And I, the I, elegance. You know, I love the idea of opening it up to work with watercolors or oil pastels mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. you have around magic markers. Heck. Um, but it is, uh, and tr- turn, I, I would encourage people to turn on some of their favorite music, you know, that, and just get into the moment and just, feel free to pick them up and, you know, just go for it. Relish them. Yeah. Yeah. And isolate them maybe on a piece of fabric, a different color, maybe on your couch or, and do some close ups. And um, I, I think you'll, you'll be surprised at how much more you see when you look at them that way. I think also just to clarify, if, you're listening to us and 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 you don't consider yourself an artist or in any way creative to take any object a flower uh, anything at all piece of food a leaf and place it on a piece of black fabric is to take it out of context and and you can almost when you're doing that especially if you don't consider yourself an artist squint your eyes a little bit so you're not seeing with all of your vision you're seeing sort of through your eyelashes And when you squint your eyes, you will see that there is a straight line on the right side and there is a curvy line on the left side. And you'll be less inclined to draw a flower the way you perceive it in your mind and draw the shape of what you're seeing. And then comes the real great surprise from your from your own art, which never ceases to amaze me how isolating things out of context really does shape a new way of seeing. That's a very good um, point. And it's so much fun to do. And even, you know, as I mentioned with the bouquet, if you just isolate two or three of those flowers and, and, uh, photograph them together, you'll see how they're different people. Like they're, uh, maybe sisters and the way sisters can look somewhat alike, but have their own personalities. Uh, I find Mm. it fascinating. Yes. Well, I'm so, so thankful to have this chat with you and to get to know your work a little better and to revisit the work of yours that I do have. And just thank you so much for sending your beautiful new book. It's called Radiant Beings. And the subtext, the subtitle, The Magical Essence of Flowers. And this is Joyce Tennyson. It's really an honor to talk to you today and and be with you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that uh, you're going to put the link on how you could uh, get the book on your. Of course. Yeah. Always, always, always. I'll be sure to link it and your website, any other relevant information for certain. You are wonderful. Well, thank yes. you. Thank you. Because it was yeah. a very personal project and mm. I'm, so, I'm so thrilled you liked it. Thank you. Love. Thank you so very much again. I bow to you. Mm, Same. Bowing my head forward to you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.